Welcome to Brygen. Enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to show you the correct method for trimming, cooking, and preparing perfect basic beef tongue and end up with this juicy, flavorful tray of beef tongue. We buy Angus beef tongue that comes frozen and vacuum packed. We try to buy two of the same size, and these particular ones are 1.47 and 1.33 pounds. That way, when we put them in the pot, they cook about the same time and they are both done around the same time instead of having a big one and a little one together. This is what they look like out of the package before the tongues are cooked. We like to take off any excess fat that we don't want to cook with them. There's usually not too much to trim, but just trim off any of the white fat that you see that you really don't want to cook with it. We use a 6-quart enameled covered cast iron Dutch oven for our basic cooking pot. For two tongue, we use 8 quarts of hot water. Heat your water to make it hot, but not boiling at this stage. We use bouillon cubes to make beef broth for non-critical things like beef tongue. But for soups and stews, when the broth is important, we make our own beef broth. We never use broth from a carton or can, but the bouillon cubes are fine for cooking beef tongue. While the water is heating, we crush 12 beef bouillon cubes. Those of you familiar with Japanese cooking, we use a surabachi and surakogi. You can do the same with a mortar and pestle. If you don't have either of these, and if time permits, you can put the hard cubes in water and let them soak. After the water is heated and started to steam, add the crushed beef cubes. We don't add vegetables and spices when we cook the tongue because it does very little, if anything, to the flavor of the cooked tongue when it's finished. Then add your beef tongue, Make sure everything is covered and put your lid on the pot. After the tongues and beef broth have heated up, skim the impurities from the top of the water. It's not necessary to remove all of it. You want to get a feel of how tough the uncooked tongue is so you can properly determine its tenderness as to when it is fully cooked but not overcooked. The meat will be properly cooked when the fork will easily penetrate and the meat will slide off the fork relatively easy. Remove any additional impurities that have come to the top. Now place the cover back on your pot and turn the burner temperature down. The goal is to achieve a simmer. On our stove we set it between 3 and 5. Then start a timer counting up. For the two beef tongues the size we are cooking, it will take approximately 1.5 to 2 hours. Cooking your beef tongue for a predetermined amount of time without consideration for its weight and size or putting your beef tongue in a crock pot and walking away for six hours doesn't cut the mustard in Brygen's kitchen. Overcooked beef tongue is edible and will go unnoticed by those unfamiliar with it. Then skim off any additional impurities that have come to surface and make sure you keep your cooking level at a nice simmer and not a boil. The tongues have been cooking 21 minutes and we are just going to check the pot to make sure everything is going okay. This is the proper simmer we are looking for. Now it's been an hour and 15 minutes and we just want to double check to make sure the simmer is going the way it should be. And it looks good. It's been an hour and 51 minutes. We're going to check the tenderness of the tongue and see if they need to cook longer. Put a fork into the tongue and see if it falls off the fork easily, which both of them seem to be. So it's time to take them out of the pot. Transfer the cooked tongues to a tray and let them cool 10 to 15 minutes. It's been 10 minutes that the tongue have cooled and we're ready to remove the skin from the tongue. Make a cut lengthwise just through the tough skin on the bottom of the tongue. Don't try cutting or peeling at this point Instead, turn the tongue over and make another lengthwise cut on top of the tongue. You can see that when you get to a spot where it begins to peel, it comes off really easy.
And there it is when it's finished. Now we'll peel the second tongue. Once you have your perfect beef tongue cooked and peeled, it's time to slice it to your desired thickness. We like to slice them to use alongside our breakfast eggs or just eat for snack, or you can use it for any recipe you may have or find. You can see how juicy and tender the meat is. Beef tongue is 75% fat. Some people like to make sandwiches with it. Whichever way you choose, the tongue is done to perfection and is moist, tender, and has a rich beefy flavor, and that's what makes it so good. To put some of the tongue away for later, we like to spread the tongue out on wax paper and freeze the slices as individuals. Then we vacuum pack them so that when we just want to grab a slice or two, we don't have to thaw them all, just what we want to use. You can find more fun things on the Bryjan channel. If you liked our beef tongue video, please subscribe and stay in touch. Thanks for watching.